Good morning everybody. It is Kathy Haig here at the Magical Herb and Vegetable Garden and I'm just going to make sure that I can actually see when you guys come in. I know Facebook's done a bunch of changes here so I hope this is going to go smoothly. And uh, this morning I'd like to talk with you about composting. Um, composting is one of those uh, one of those lovely topics if you're getting into gardening or you're into gardening where um, the benefits and the, the um, excitement of having such fabulous soil just from scraps that you throw in your backyard um, makes for what we call really interesting dinner conversation um, but really doesn't impress anybody else and it's always nice to uh, it's always nice to um, talk about it uh, you know with like-minded people and what I see especially for people who are getting started is that um, is that um, Sorry, I just see my dog got let out here. Hey, I'm on a Facebook Live. Can you keep the dog quiet? Thanks. Um, there's um, there's uh, so many different instructions and ways of doing things and, um, you know, that it can be really confusing. And it really doesn't have to be this complicated getting started. Yes, it's a science. You can buy books. You can have you, you can explore for as long as you like and continue on. But getting started really doesn't need to be that complicated. And you don't have to delve any further into it if you don't want to. So I'm going to give you my best tips here for compost. As you can see, I'm sitting in front of my lovely compost pile. An entire winter is worth. Well, I shouldn't say that. Um, on top, it's winter's worth. Um, I haven't turned this compost over for a couple of years here. And it is, um, you know, time that I do this. Now, we built this compost, I don't know if you can see here, out of old pallets. Um, we did three wide just because with all of our, um, our, we do have a yard. It's like we have a quarter acres and one eighth of it is lawn and garden and so forth. And so we have a lot of garden scraps as well as food scraps and things that we add into it. And um, it, it's, uh, it's time to turn it over and recycle a bunch of this. Now you look at it on top and go, oh my gosh, that's so messy. But I promise you that underneath there is rich, earthwormy soil and there's so many benefits to this so <clears throat> why would you want to recycle all your food scraps well it's one of those free things we can do to give back into the earth that we're growing our vegetables and taking nutrients from it's one of those um, cardinal rules of life and the universe and science um, if you take something out of something you need to replenish it and put back in and this is very very true when it comes to the soil in your garden you're growing vegetables, you're taking out nutrients, and you need to continually putting back in. You're going to have better, healthier plants that will fight off disease better. Um, it will become a much better, um, you'll have much better crops and foods. And it's just gonna make everything so much easier if you just add that compost back in every so often. And you'll find that your earthworms do a lot for you. And if you have not ever, you know, looked into the benefits of earthworms, uh, it's something that you, you really, really want to pay attention to. It's one of those things that nature does for you, um, that earthworms just want to take um, organic matter. We're talking leaves, food scraps, um, grass clippings, all those things, and they will turn it into rich, healthy soil. If you go to your hardware store, your um, plant center, you know, seed supply place, you'll see all different kinds of compost, you know, composted manures, all those sorts of things. And you will see bags of earthworm castings, uh, which is earthworm poop. And it is called black gold in gardening circles because it is so valuable and nutritious. It is a pH neutral product and all they want to do is just munch through the soil and they poop out black gold. I know it's a, it's a great topic. You probably won't want to bring it up at the dinner table, like I say, but it is um, one of nature's um, best gifts to you. And so to build a compost pile is actually pretty easy. And I've seen um, all kinds of things here. I actually wrote myself some notes just so I hopefully don't forget anything for you. But um, it's, um, 
I've seen a lot of different things. If you're doing hot composting or you're trying to speed up the process, yes, there's absolutely ways to do that. And, you know, you know, you're layering in or, um, organic matter on bare soil, you know, so you throw in food scraps and maybe some grass clippings and then some dry leaves and, you know, um, your your grass clippings or alfalfa or whatever it is what's called green manure it's nitrogen rich if you have too much of it like you know bags and bags of grass clippings for example and you just pile them up they kind of go slimy and ferment and whatever and it takes a lot longer for them to break up so you kind of want to break that up you know because it can get pretty sour smelling you you want to break all that up so that, that there's really not a whole lot of odor to it but beyond that um, as you can see here we throw our stuff in, leaves in the fall, um, weeds from the greenhouse and garden, you know, smaller clippings from our fruit trees, you know, the branches and stuff. And we just let nature do its thing. Um, now, if you want to speed up, you're going to be turning your compost every couple of weeks. You can do that. Um, but there's ways to simplify it. Not everybody's capable of turning their compost pile every two weeks or three weeks or whatever it is. Um, some of us, it's maybe health issues or maybe you have back and hip issues, you know, and it's just not possible. Maybe it's a time issue. For me, it's a time issue, you know. So um, I let nature do its thing, but you can go like on Amazon or, you know, Lowe's or wherever it is that you live and you can get um, like tumbler composters. They stand up, you're, you know, at waist height, you don't have to bend over. Um, and they are very quick at turning, turning um, uh, matter into good organic soil that you can add to your garden within a few days or a week or two, depending on, on you know, the heat and the temperature and all that. Um, you know, make sure that you have one that is at a height, you can just roll your wheelbarrow in underneath and when it's ready, you just, you know, open it up, kind of scrape and dump everything in and off you go. Easy peasy. Um, maybe you just don't have the need for a big compost like this. You know, you don't have a big yard. My um, in-laws have an old little black um, kind of uh, square tower thing. I think he got off Amazon probably 20 years ago at least and it's just plain and black it's got a lid on it just keeps everything enclosed in it's just my, my um, father-in-law and grandma and um, you know the food scraps that they throw in there it's perfectly fine hey Claire um, you leave yours for a long time too hey and yeah I'm gonna have to dig into mine because I really need compost for all my trees and everything um, but all this stuff that isn't um, turned here is just going to go to the side on a pile. And once I've got all the good soil out, it's going to go back in, kind of get mixed up, and we'll just continue adding stuff on. It's, it's so easy to just let nature do its thing. So um, when you're starting, here's, here's the couple of tips, a few tips that I have for when you're starting a compost pile. Um, you know, if you can start it on bare ground, it should be started on bare ground so that earthworms and stuff, they come in and out as the heat, it heats and cools. They're not going to stay in your compost pile when it's boiling out. They will go back into the ground during the day. You want this because they bring nutrients up from underneath and they cycle it through the soil. They aerate it. They, as they tunnel through, they aerate your compost pile. They take nutrients from it back down into the soil. The only thing that I know of that, that might change this for you at this point, um, there are places where the, are, there are Asian jumping worms now, and they look similar to earthworms, but they are very active, very predatory, and very invasive, and they actually feed on earthworms and such. So if that's a problem in your area, then you're going to have to look at an enclosed compost and getting proper uh, red regular earthworms so that you can actually benefit your soil. But um, other than that, you can just do it on bare ground. Um, it doesn't have to be big, like I said with this. Um, layer in some stuff if you've got it. You know, try not to put too much of any one thing. Some other things that you can add in are um, shredded, uh, dull newspaper. We're not talking the shiny, um, you know, magazine print, but just like dull newspaper. Um, dull cardboard can be shredded up if you're not using it for mulching out in your garden. <coughs> hey, Patricia, how are you? Um, you, um, <clears throat> you, you can add all these things in your earthworms. Love it. I hear people all the time. Oh, well, you know, is newsprint organic? Pretty much all newsprint these days. We're talking the dull stuff, dull newspapers, not shiny again. 
um, is all made with um, vegetable uh, based uh, inks and your earthworms again are a really good judge of whether or not an item is good because if there is very too much of chemicals in anything they will just vanish they'll go elsewhere and let me assure you even if you're composting indoors um, if you're in an apartment and you've got a bokashi composter or you've got a vermicomposting bin yes you can have these indoors in a condo or wherever it is that you live you can shred these things up and feed them to your earthworms okay um, they love it and they do very well with it um citrus fruit is fine it just don't throw in big amounts like let the let the chemical thing i throw lime and l limes and lemons and the odd oranges and stuff in my pile all the time i have plenty of earthworms you know the difference might be is if you live where like i don't we don't live where we can grow citrus um and so you know maybe if you have you know um, wheelbarrows full of stuff that you're throwing into the compost you might want to break it up or maybe keep you keep some of it separate because um, they can be quite acidic but as long as it's kind of you know your everyday stuff that you use um, and we we're a predominantly Asian inspired household um, my mother-in-law is from Thailand my so my husband is is part Asian um, we have a lot of Asian food in this house and they use a lot of lemons and limes and stuff a, a lot compared to the usual household and it's never made an issue. So like I say, um, you know, if you have an orchard of lime, lime or lemon or orange trees or whatever, you know, you might not want to dump them on by the wheelbarrow full. Make sure to, you know, mix it up with other stuff, you know, like your, your um, leaves and grass clippings and all that. But in general, it's not going to make a difference. It, the only difference might be, again, um, because you've got to keep a, a much closer eye on balance is if you have like an indoor vermicomposter. And so you really have to keep that balance happening for them. So you might want to test it out, you know, like with a, you know, if you have a chopped and chopped up lemon or something, you know, see if mixing, you know, you can test it out. Um, but for everyday composting, I'm telling you right now, it, I, it, they, they break down just fine. And it's a great way to add to your soil. Another one that I hear of all the time now that I'm thinking of it is um, eggshells. Okay, I've had so many people, you know, coming up, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, what about salmonella or this or that? Those are all, if you're in an area where, where it is, like I can't even, I, I don't think we've ever had it in this area, but um, it doesn't matter. Um, that, is, that is a kind of, um, illness uh, or, or um, bacteria that when exposed to air and sunshine dies off very quickly you don't need to rinse your eggshells you don't need to bake them just kind of break them up when you throw them in your compost bucket and toss them out and mother nature and air and sunshine will take care of all of that very quickly and um oh you're welcome patricia glad that helped um you know, and it, it, um, it, it'll break down and go into your garden. You will not have a problem with any kinds of diseases. Um, there's a lot of things that, that people who are, you know, maybe not understanding, you know, so they're trying to be careful because they don't understand the process, you know, so they make themselves a lot of extra work. And I'm telling you, you don't need to do it. Personal experience, I, you know, grew up doing this gardening whatever um, my grandfather was a farmer my mom's a gardener nobody ever ever washed their eggshells and you know and baked them or, or whatever before throwing them on the compost they just go up okay and the chickens all scratched through it and they were just fine so um, i hope that helps now some of the things that you don't want to include in a compost pile um, a compost pile means is usually organic matter you can add in manure like from rabbits or chickens or um, horses, all those sorts of things. A lot of it will have seeds and stuff that needs to break down. So you're probably going to need to let it sit a lot longer. Um, you might want to, you know, cover it with black plastic to give it that extra heat so that all those seeds aren't coming into life in your garden because seeds are pretty resilient. And there's nothing like having, you know, 500,000 hayseeds come to life in, in your uh, garden, right? 
Uh, so if you're adding in those kinds of manures, you want to just give it, make sure that you've given it at least, you know, your six months or whatever, maybe with a tarp on it, um, you know, for the last few weeks and some extra moisture just to make sure those those seeds have died off because it will make you uh, make your gardening a whole lot easier, but it will also enrich your garden. You are always going to have better um, results um, in a garden if you use animal manures because of the nitrogen content. Um, now some are hotter than others. Um, chicken manure is the hottest because it has such a high nitrogen and ammonia content, which is why it can really stink. Um, and it just takes a lot longer. It's one of those things if it's still not completely broken down and you're throwing it on your garden in the fall, you know, rain, wind and snow um, will take care of it by spring. Um, but, you know, you can mix it into your compost pile and your earthworms uh, are, are, are going to explode with it. They love that stuff. What you do not want to include in your compost pile is things like human feces, um, cat and dog feces. Um, because of the way we're designed, um, our elimination systems are very different and you can have very different um, parasite concerns, all those things. Um, there's a lot more systems now, of course, with recycling that are coming up that will turn these into compostable manure, but it is a much longer process. You want to make sure it's done properly so that you're not ending up with um, diseases that you don't want to have to deal with um, in your garden and compost that can be passed on um, through food, you know, into um, our food system again into other people. So um, unless you have thoroughly researched, um, you know, being able to compost like human waste um, and you have the proper setup to do it, just don't do it. There's a reason we have, you know, um, sewer systems and all that because it's a it's a much more uh, much bigger process and and um, you don't want to make sure that you have that right. Um, also, you don't want to be including like meat scraps and chicken bones and things like that. Um, there's a lot of fats to them. There's a lot of um, they take a lot longer to break down and they attract a different kind of. Um, <clears throat> they attract a different kind of. Um, pre um, pests okay um, with a regular compost pile you might have a few mice and if it's uncovered like mine is you'll see the birds in it all the time picking at the breadcrumbs and fruit scraps and whatever and that's perfectly fine if you start adding um, meat and fats and things like that they won't break down your earthworms will not be able to handle them they'll just avoid it altogether um, they deal strictly with um, dead vegetable matter that's it right and it will slow down your composting for a very long time you want to you know deal with that completely differently you know either send it out with your your garbage recycling or whatever however it is that your your area deals with it um <clears throat> but uh um, let me see. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, if I realized that the last bit of noodles from the Chinese food got thrown out in the compost and they were deep fried, you know, they were fried up in the wok, you know, I don't go running out to, you know, scrape out, you know, six tablespoons worth. I know between the birds and the elements and I've got a big enough compost pile, it's fine. Um, but you don't want to be, you know, bringing home leftovers from your local, uh, your, your local restaurants and just toss it in there. Um, sorry, I missed your comment here, Claire. You shove everything into it and try not to put clippings in it because some of my hedge is prickly. I do add horse, oh, it must be horse poop. I can't get this to open, so I'll have to look at it later. Um, but I'm sure it's fine, Claire. I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. You have lots of experience. Um, but I'll read this, uh, read it after and answer it once this is posted. Um, something that you absolutely can use in your garden, and most people don't realize it, is um, fish leftovers. Okay, so we're talking, you know, um, fish heads, fish guts, fish tails, all those things. Now, you don't want to just throw them out and leave them on top because it will attract, but they break down differently from like 
beef and lamb and chicken and all those things are it's a different if you take and like bury it in your compost or take it out and bury it at least a foot down in your garden your earthworms will take and break it up and you will have the richest most nutritious soil it will be absolutely amazing okay um, it's a great way to recycle those fish heads and stuff uh, what I recommend doing, you know, especially if it's winter, have like a Ziploc, Ziploc bags or whatever um, and take and just uh, freeze them kind of like in a in a oblong sort of shape so that when you take it out to the garden in the spring, you can finally dig it up and bury it. It's kind of, you know, in long cylinders or whatever that you can bury down deep and um, I do this in the greenhouse and it gets hot in there and you would never know I've never had dogs or anything dig it up I bury it down deep enough but my goodness does it ever enrich your soil so keep that in mind uh oh I see you don't put meat in it okay yeah no you don't put meat in um I want to make sure that I didn't miss anything now, a super easy way to compost, even if you don't have, you know, you want to speed up the process, um, but maybe you don't have the means to get a bigger composting system right now, you don't have the time to be turning it over, is to make sure, you want to make sure that your compost pile has moisture. If it's dried right out, it's just going to take way longer. So, you know, make sure and give it some um, good moisture and cover it with some black plastic cover it with some black plastic the heat will speed up the whole process and you're going to be able to use it much much sooner that's one of the easiest ways to do it but if you live maybe where um, you know, there's there's subdivisions and cities where composting is not allowed um, or you're not allowed to have it out in the open like you have to be very careful how you do it and I get it because you know there's people who do let things become a big mess and you know they want areas to stay tidy so, I mean, you can even take like a big black garbage bin. If you go on YouTube, there's, I, I've seen YouTube videos on it, but you can take like a big black garbage bin, you know, with the little rollies on it so that it's easy to move around. Make sure it's round so you can take and shake things up. Just put it on its side and kind of shake things up. But um, you can drill holes in the bottom and you can drill holes, you know, around the edge and also around near the top for ventilation and layer your stuff in there keep it keep it uh, warm put it on some bare ground so your earthworms can go in and out as it cools and warms and um, yes the heat will kill anything that you know shouldn't be in there including it, it's going to turn your soil into but I mean there's ways to do it you know even in places where you know maybe you know so that nobody knows what's going on you know you don't get in trouble and as long as you're putting in the right things it shouldn't cause any problems um, so I hope all these things help I'm going to post some pictures uh, once I've got this in of um, like my father-in-law's composting system it's simple it's easy it's cheap um, and there's just all kinds of ways to do it and it really doesn't have to be that complicated you don't have to wait till you have all the right stuff oh and the other thing I'm going to do um, quite some time ago uh, last year I did an interview with Pauline Pears she is a UK author and she worked for Garden Organic for UK for over 30 years and just has amazing stories um, and I learned some fantastic things even from, um, from, you know, interviewing her because, you know, like I've been doing this for a long time, but she had some amazing information that, you know, taught me a lot as well. So I will share the link below with that. My battery is going to die here pretty quick. So I guess I better, I better go. Um, but I'm going to share the link so that you can check in with her. She's got like 10 books on organic gardening and composting I highly suggest getting one or any or all of them and uh, you know just just make it easy gardening does not have to be so difficult and uh, you're welcome to message me anytime leave me a comment below make sure to uh, like the page or, or sign up for um, notifications wherever it is you're watching this here or on YouTube later once I get it posted there and, uh, you know, let's, let's make our garden super productive this year. Thank you all. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye for now.